WebP is a modern image format that has one purpose, to make super fast loading images on the web. Let's get a Python script to get all that image conversion done for us. First thing we're gonna do is set up a virtual environment like usual, and here's the file structure that you're gonna wanna use. We have an images folder, which has all of the images we wanna convert. And then of course we've got our convert-webp.py in that same folder. I'm gonna go ahead and create the virtual environment right now. If you don't know what that is, go ahead and check out the card for that explanation. And I'll go ahead and activate that new virtual environment. All right, now there's one more thing that we need to take care of before we start, and that is installing Pillow, which is the library that allows us to do all of this conversion without us having to get into some of the nitty gritty details. So I'm going to type in pip install Pillow with a capital P, make sure that's spelled correctly. So now that that is done, we can go ahead and close the terminal just for a moment and let's get into our script. I've got, of course, the boilerplate stuff, and this is what we're gonna put our commands as if we were to type them into the terminal or, or the Python shell, and uh, we'll put all of our functions up here. First thing, we actually wanna use what we just installed, right? So we need to say from PIL, which stands for Python Image Library, it's pillow that we just installed. We're gonna import something called image with a capital I. Let's focus on just converting one single image to WebP. I'm gonna start out with a function that I'm just gonna call convert to WebP, because that's exactly what it does. And we're going to need to have it accept a couple of things from us or the script. We want to know the file name, and we also want to know the path to that file. And I'm actually gonna set up a default right here. Since we already know that we have this images folder ready for us to go, this way I can take care of this. You don't have to use a default if you don't want to, and you can also use a default on the file name if you wanna test something and just keep constantly converting that same file name over and over again. If you came here from my other video about image optimization on the web, you're gonna know the difference between a JPEG and a PNG and a lot of that has to do with the way that they treat the information of the photo. Now, we're gonna to wanna to give some special settings for each different format. So we actually need to find out which file extension our current image that we're working with is gonna be. So if the image of whatever file name is happens to be a JPEG, I wanna have different settings than a PNG. In order to do that, I'm gonna set an extension variable right here and we're gonna take file name, that's what we, we're passed into this function, and we're gonna split this on the very last period that appears in the file name. And this is a great way to do it because in case you happen to have extra periods inside of your file name, it, it can ignore all of that. It's only gonna split it on that very last one. So if you want a little bit more in depth on this, there's actually a link in the description to a blog post that explains the specific line. Awesome. Now I'm actually going to save the actual file name without the extension because I already know that we're going to want to keep that so that we can now add the, the WebP extension onto it without having to do all this over again. So we'll just hurry and do file name dot split. Again, we're going to do the period and we're going to take the first group from that. All right. So now that we have our naming taken care of for the moment, we can now open up our image that we're gonna be using to make the conversion. I'm gonna set a variable called img for image, and I will use the, the image that we imported from PIL, from Pillow, and we are going to open, so dot open, I'm gonna use the path that we just collected from the function call, and we're gonna also add on that file name so that we have a full path, including the file name altogether. And that is gonna open up our image. So now we can test if this is a PNG or a JPEG, and then we'll set different settings depending on which one the image actually is. So if the extension is a PNG, then we are going to want to save our image as, and we're gonna pass it two arguments here. We're gonna first do path plus file name plus oops plus dot 
WebP because now we're adding the extension onto our path, the file name, and then the extension has been removed. So this actually, I made a mistake here. This is F name because that is our variable that contains a file name without the extension. So we wanna we wanna now compress everything together, including that dot webp. That's really important to keep that dot there. Alright, so now we also want to pass in the webp type because we want Pillow to convert it to a webp type of, of image. So we're gonna put that as the second argument here. And the last argument is going to be lossless equals true. And again, that is because we want that specific setting for PNGs. It's not going to be the greatest for JPEG. They have different settings that we want to use. Use lossless equals true for most PNGs. Awesome. Now what happens if it is a JPEG? So let's put extension equals JPEG. And I'm also going to add this or extension equals JPEG with, a, with an E because we want to capture both because it's the same thing. So now we're going to do something fairly similar to this line. So I'm actually going to copy this and move it down here. And the only thing we have to do is change lossless. We're going to get rid of this argument. And instead we're going to use quality equals and I'm going to put 85. That seems to be a pretty good percentage number of, of the quality reduction. So what it's saying is we're going to do about 85% of what it originally was. So feel free to kind of adjust and mess with these numbers as you test on various types of images. If it's not working for you, if the quality isn't quite good enough, go ahead and bump that number just up a little bit. Or if you think you can get away with a little bit more of a, a smaller file size and, and the quality isn't really diminishing too bad, you might be able to get away with a, knocking it down a couple of, of notches. So feel free to mess with this number here. Otherwise, we are good to go and test this out. I'm just gonna run this in the terminal, but I want it to immediately convert to WebP and I'm going to give it the logo.png that I know is in my images folder. And again, I don't need to pass in the path because I happen to set it as the default since right now I know for sure I want that images folder to all be converted at some point. So I'm going to save this. Let's open up the terminal here and let's give this a shot. Python convert webp.py and when I run this, I can now see that this logo.webp is now available for me. And you know what's really cool about this is if you look, here's the original. If you look down here at the file size, you can see the original file size was 28 kilobytes. But if we change this to the webp image, it's almost cut in half, which is super nice. And that bodes very well for my website as I'm cutting down these file sizes without much loss of quality at all. So let's try this out with a JPEG now. I'm just gonna go back in here and I have an image called fall. We'll go back in and run this one more time. And as you can see, we now have a new fall.webp version of this original image. And if we look again at the size differences, this was already a massive image, 6.3 megabytes, but now that it's in a WebP format, you can see 1.2 megabytes. That is an insane amount of crunched down optimization. This is awesome. Ideally, if you really were gonna put this on the web, we definitely don't need the dimensions to be so massive. And that's where most of this file size is coming from. So make sure that you check your dimensions while you're optimizing your images, but changing it to a WebP is a really great way to get this done. Now I've got a couple of other images in here. I don't want to have to sit here and run this script every time I have an image. So let's hurry and make another function to get this ready for us to just take care of the whole folder for us. So I'm going to close the terminal again. And this time I'm going to go up here and we're going to write one more function. I'm just going to call it convert all. 
And again, we're going to need a path. But this time, of course, we don't need an actual file name because it's going to take care of all of the files for us. So I'm going to go ahead and set that default one more time so we can even eliminate some more typing. Now, this next part is going to be a little bit uh, beyond the scope of this particular video, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a for loop to go through each file in the folder. So we're going to do for root comma dirs or directories comma files in os dot walk and we're going to pass it in the path that we just sent it in the function call. Now we are going to have to import this. So let's go up to the top and say import OS. You don't need to install anything for this because it should come standard with your Python installation, which is really nice. And that just allows you to access the file system through your Python script. All right. So now to finish up this for loop, so we're going to go through all of the, the files in the path that we sent. And then we want to go through each file itself. And just to be safe, we want to make sure that each file that we're looking at is actually an image file. So we're going to check to make sure it's only a PNG or a JPEG. So we're going to do one more for loop inside of this one. And I'm going to just call it image file in files. And again, that's what came out of OS walk right here. And here's where we do a quick check if, if the image file dot ends with dot PNG oops, or the image file ends with dot JPEG or of course the alternate st spelling of JPEG image file ends with dot JPEG. If it's any one of those, then we're going to want to do something with it. So we can finally go ahead and just pass it, convert to web, which is the function that we did up here because we don't need to redo any of that stuff again. And we're going to send this, the image file itself, and then we're going to send it the root, which is also something that came out of OS walk. So once that is done, we should be able to get rid of this and call it convert all. We don't even need to send it anything here. You would add the path if you wanted to do something other than that standard images folder that we've been working with, but I'm good to go. So let's try this out. I'm going to go ahead and run this script one more time and let's see what happens. Boom. Now every single one has been taken care of. We have a web P for every single image that is available. And again, as you can see, it's just so nice to see those that file size just diminish. Look at that, 3, 378 down to 85 kilobytes. That's about as good as it gets. Now, there is one more thing that you need to know about how to use WebP images on your website if that's what you're going to be doing. So I would recommend checking out this video right here to find out how to use that in HTML in the best way possible to make sure that everybody can see them despite any browser compatibility issues.